Hi everyone, welcome to episode 9. So there are just two pretty simple things that I want to get done this video. Uh, the first is to get collisions working for both 3D and 2D mode. And uh, the second is to get a texture mapped across here. Now, um, just considering 2D mode, uh, as you can see, we'd have to rotate the mesh 270 degrees to get it to actually um, be visible. But now the problem comes in where we try to add uh, 2D colliders to a object that's rotated like this. Um, you can see it's not very happy. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to keep the map generator object unrotated and we will add the colliders to this object and um, then we'll create a separate object for the mesh to go on which we can rotate if we're uh, in 2D mode. So let's create an empty child and I'm going to call this cave mesh and I'm going to add a, a mesh filter and a mesh renderer to here and also just apply the cave material there and on the map, ge on the map generator we can just delete the uh, two mesh components from here since we're not having a mesh on this object anymore. Um, let's go into the mesh generator and create a public mesh filter variable for our cave and instead of assigning the cave mesh to this object we'll assign it to the cave object. Um, so now if we just run this, oops, we need to actually apply that first of course. If we run it, um, now we would just need to rotate this 270 degrees. Um, of course in 2D mode we don't actually want uh, the walls to be generated since you can't see them. So um, let's create a public bool and call this is 2D and we'll only call create wall mesh if not, uh, if not is 2D. All right, so just do that. Um, so uh, let us start with uh, 3D collisions. Um, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to add a mesh collider to the walls. Um, just to test it out, let's create a plane for our ground. I'm going to size this up. Something like that. Call that ground. Um, since I'm in play mode, it's going to delete itself when I go out of play mode, so I'll just copy it first and uh, paste it back in. Just put it under there. Um, let's also create a C-sharp script and we're going to create a very simple player controller. Um, just something it's got a rigid body to move it around. In the start method we can just assign rigid body small r equal to get component of type rigid body. All right, we also want a vector three variable for our velocity. In the update method, we can just say that velocity is equal to a new vector three, and we'll get inputs on our horizontal and our vertical axes. Input dot get access raw vertical. All right, and let's normalize this vector 3 and multiply it by some speed and then because we're using a rigid body um, we want to do all of our actual movement in the fixed update method so we'll say rigid body dot move position and we'll give it our starting position, rigid body dot position, plus the velocity multiplied by time dot fixed delta time. Okay, let's create a little 3D object to be our player. Drag it up there. Let's uh, create a player material. I'll just make this a unlit color, mm, something red, so it's nicely visible, just assign it. And uh, Let's drag our player script on there, as well as a rigid body. Okay, so I'm gonna make my game window bigger and turn off gizmos. 
Okay, so now if we play, um, of course we're not colliding with the walls. So we're going to go into Mono Develop again, into the Mesh Generator script, and where we're creating the wall mesh, right at the end we want to add a mesh collider to our wall object. So we can say mesh collider, we can call it our wall collider, um, is equal to walls.gameobject.add component. Um, we want to add a mesh collider. And then we can simply say wall collider dot shared mesh is equal to the wall mesh that we've just created. Okay, that should do the trick. So if we press play, you can see walls have now got a mesh collider added to them and our player is constraining to collisions. So that's cool. Um, let's set it up for 2D now. Um, I'm going to call this scene um, scene 3D. I'm going to duplicate it and create a 2D version. So let's go into that 2D version and in here I'll say uh, is 2D and I'm going to take my cave mesh. I'm going to rotate it 270 degrees i going to do the same thing with my ground, in fact, 270. Um, so now if we go into 2D mode, press play, let's see if this is working. Um, okay, I think it is working, but, oops, but we want this uh, ground plane to just move back a bit. Okay, that's good. Um, for our little player guy here, I'm going to create a 2D version of this player script. I'll just call that player 2D. Open it up. I'll rename it over here as well. And instead of a rigid body, it will be a rigid body 2D. Instead of a vector 3, vector th uh, it'll be a vector 2. Just change all of these things. Um, this is a vector 2 as well. Just remove that. And the rest looks good. Save. OK, no errors. Go to remove the rigid body and the player script and add instead, oops, I should also remove the box collider, add instead a rigid body 2D, a box collider 2D, and my player 2D script. Okay, so now if I press play, we should be able to move around here. Um, just let's quickly get the camera working. Uh, put it there and uh, we need to move it on the z-axis. I'm just going to turn down the size a bit and position it somewhere so we can see the whole map. Okay, that looks nice. Um, let's start generating the 2D colliders. So, going into the mesh generator script, uh, let's see. So, if not 2D, we're creating the wall mesh. If it is 2D, then we want to create some uh, 2D bounds. So, Mm -hmm. I'm going to say if is 2D, otherwise create the wall mesh. So if it is 2D, then generate uh, 2D colliders. Okay, it's a good name for a method. Copy that and let's create the method over here. Void generate 2D colliders. And we want to start off by calculating the mesh outlines because we are going to use that information. So just to refresh your memory, um, calculate mesh outlines is going to give us a list of outlines and each outline is made up of a list of integers and those integers refer to the vertices in the vector three list. So what we want to do is we want to go through each of the outlines, so for each list of integers, which we'll call outline in the outlines list, we want to create a new edge collider 2D for each of them. So we'll say edge collider 2D, we'll call this edge collider, is equal to, and we want to add the new component to this game object, game object.add edge collider 2D, just like that. So uh, to actually set the edge collider, 
we'll want to use edge collider dot points, which is just an array of vector twos. So let's make a, a new array of vector twos, which we'll call our edge points. And this is equal to a new array of vector twos with a length of the number of vertices that make up our outline. So outline dot count. And then we're going to have a for loop for int i equals zero. We're going to go through each of the elements in our outline. So i less than outline dot count i plus plus. And then we'll say edge points i is equal to the uh, vertex in the vertex list. So uh, that is vertices and that is with an index of outline i. All right. So now having done that, we can say edge collider dot points is equal to edge points. Now, obviously, each time that we generate a new map and calculate these, uh, these colliders, we want to actually start off by removing all of the current colliders. So uh, we'll say edge collider 2D array, which we'll call our current colliders, is equal to game object dot get components. So we're getting every edge collider 2D that's currently attached to this game object. And we want to go through them all for wind i equals zero, i less than current colliders dot length i plus plus. I want to go through them all and destroy each of them. Destroy current colliders i. All right, so now let's see if this is working. Um, actually, it won't be working. I've just realized um, when we are setting the edge points, um, this is a vector two array, and these are all vector threes. So we need to convert them to vector twos, but we can't just cast them like so. Um, we need to actually take the Z axis and put that as the Y axis. So we'll create a new vector two and use the x value from here for the x and the z value for the y. All right, let's uh, let's run this. And if we just click on our map generator, um, you can see the edge collider 2D that's been added um, all around. And let me just uh, move my player around. You can see he's constraining nicely to collisions. And uh, if I click to generate a new map, you can see uh, the collider is uh, being destroyed and then added again. Cool. So the next step is the texturing. Okay, so let's go to the mesh generator script and I'm going to go up to where we created the cave mesh. And what we want is a array of vector twos. Um, each vector two will belong to a single vertex and we'll basically say the percentage of that vertex um, sort of on the x-axis in the map and on the y-axis in the map. So let's create a new vector two array. We can call this our UVs. It's equal to a new vector two array and uh, however many vertices we have, that's how many vectors we want. So um, just use vertices.count as the size. And then we'll have yet another for loop int i equals zero. I'm gonna go through each of the vertices. So i less than vertices dot count i plus plus. And we want to get the percent x, um, first of all, for the vertex. So we've got three bits of information. We know the position of the vertex on the x axis. And we can figure out where our map starts on the x axis and where it ends on the x axis. So we can use mathf dot inverse lerp to figure out the percentage from this. So we want to first give it the far left of our map. Um, so that will be negative map width divided by two. So negative map dot get length zero for the x-axis. Um, and we need to multiply that by the square size that we allowed to be specified. 
um, for two, that will just be the positive version of this. Oh, I didn't, I, I didn't divide by two. That should be in there. Um, all right, and then we pass in our actual vertex um, x value. All right, and we want to do the same thing for percent y. Only here we want to replace this with vertices i dot z. Okay, then we can quite simply say uv's i is equal to a new vector two using percent x and percent y. Okay, um, to test this, I'm just going to drag in a rock texture I found, and uh, I'm going to apply this to the cave material. All right, like that. Let's run it. Okay, not exactly working. Very good reason for that. Um, we haven't actually done anything with this UVs array. <laughs> Okay, we need to say mesh dot uvs, uh, rather uv is equal to our uvs. All right, hopefully we'll have more success this time. Okay, we do, that's brilliant. It's being applied. At the moment, it is massive. We want to make a way to be able to tile it. So what we can do is we can just go in here and create an int tile, uh, tile size or tile amount, set this equal to 10, just to try that out. And uh, we can just multiply our percent x by the tile amount, like so. And that should make it repeat however many times uh, we set our tile amount to. So let's give that a, another go. And that looks pretty cool. Okay. Um, yeah, that's everything for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed, and uh, see you next episode. Cheers.